Welcome to Full Auto with Dimitri and Paul. Dimitri, say hi. Heidi ho. All right, now you can leave. That's Thank you. That's all I needed you for for this show. Dude, I got the rest. I'm hungry. I'm going to go get some Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Do we get paid home. for mentioning them? What's that? Do we get paid for mentioning them? Yeah, yeah. You, uh, actually, now Taco Bell is a sponsor. So there's that. So this, is, so this is your home for self-defense and self-preservation since 2016. The date is October 18th, 2016. And you're listening to the episode called Gun Control is Racist. But before we begin, let's get you fully prepared because it could get a little dangerous. Grab your seats, adjust your headphones, brace yourselves for you are about to enter a full auto hour of a gun-filled zone. New Shooting Self-Defense presents a state of wake joint. Grab your beer, your ammo, and your clipozine glockomatic as we take you through a full auto hour of fast, funny, deadly, serious talk about guns. If you cry when someone draws a picture of a gun on a piece of paper in front of you, you best stay away because you are about to enter a gun-filled zone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, full auto with Dimitri and Paul. That's right, I'm Paul. Welcome back. And this is Dimitri. Did you like that? Oh. That was all right. Did you like the welcome back? You, oh, the, you, you, was... We took a vote, and Dimitri said, welcome back is what I want. I want you to always say welcome back. And now you're not going to deprive me and leave me hanging out to dry and deny that truth, are you? Yeah, whatever. You, you're, Can you we like just it? do the show? This is full auto. It is? It is. Because you're rambling this on is about new something. new shooting self-defense is full auto. And on this show, we focus on a monumental... Yet little talked about Supreme Court ruling in 1878, U.S. v. Shank. And of course, in the, in the, well, not of course, you don't know this yet, but oh, did you hear that? That's my doggy. That's our guard dog. That's that guy. He defends us from, well, it's my mom's dog, right? Because we're going with that. I'm in my mom's basement. You're not responding. You're totally dead. 1878. 1878, U.S. v. Shank. We're also going to talk about where did the NRA really come from? This ruling will open the door wide for state-level gun control laws. But don't worry, we haven't forgotten Happy Ending. We got that on on board, too. I got my gangsta guy here, yo. What up, cuz? Break yourself, break yourself, break yourself, cuz. This is a ghost gun. This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. 30 magazine clip in half a second. We have federal regulations and state laws that prohibit hunting ducks more than three rounds, and yet it's legal to hunt humans. Shout out to my little friend! Well, you just said, well, that's it. We're, we're not doing, we're not do- saying that again, and impose very severe, tough uh, gun laws, and they haven't, they haven't had a mass shooting since. You know, semi-automatic weapons are not just about gun control, this is about national security. You know that these weapons can shoot down airplanes. Break yourself! Break yourself! Break yourself! The big difference between an assault rifle and a hunting rifle is that frankly it's scope. It's not the scope can be purchased online. I want to see people with the SARM permits. I want to see what the SARM does in major major cities. How's that for a plan? We cannot let a minority of people hold a viewpoint that terrorizes the majority of people. If this is done on spur of the moment with a hunting rifle, um, very easily, as long as it was a double-shot weapon, they can, they can easily do it with something they can purchase at a grocery store. Say hello to my little friend! This is the Second Amendment is in the Constitution so that we can have muskets when uh, the British people come over in 1800. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? You get to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you bunk? Fuck yourself! Cuz! Yes! Say it. Go ahead, say it. Hey guys, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> I'm glad we're back. Hey? 
I did. Should I do it? No, please uh, don't. You don't want me to do it? Spare okay. people. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. For uh, when don't we do things a little differently? That's true. Dude, every time you do something different, you you, you just change Who's it again. Who's more audience? Actually, our Who audience cares? is building. Just so the changing do the is show. Different. You don't need to tell people what you do. Different. No, <laughs> I'm going to tell them. No one will notice. Dude, they will. i got to oh. satisfy my OCD and let them know. Are you denying me my fundamental right to 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 to? I'm down with OCD. OCD. Yeah, down you with know OCD. me. Yeah, you know me. So we're going to basically we're having we're just doing blast from the past and then happy ending and blast from the past is going to take three segments because I thought this topic was worthy of three segments. I think you would agree. Well, I'm waiting for the agreement. I hear silence cricket. from you. Cricket. I, I know. Cricket. <laughs> big old fat cricket. cricket. What we're going to do is we're going to end up talking about the Supreme Court ruling in 1878, which was U.S. versus... You know, 1878 and 1978, there's 100 years there. That is true. If you so, add 100 to 1878, you, you would get 1978. No that matter was a whether you're talking year. years or money or apples. That was a great year. What happened in 1978? California, baby. California I was happened? In Northern California. Did you move there or leave? No, we 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 moved to. Because I would th- I would be thinking you'd be leaving, and that we would were be on the ranch. There. Actually, Northern California is pretty cool. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, but and you had a lot more freedom there, there, and and you were blissfully unaware of the reality around you. So that must have been like kind of Nirvana land for you. It was. And then nine years old, riding around in pickup trucks and tractors. He was and nine in eighteen seventy eight. Let's process nineteen seventy eight. He's old. Shooting thirty out sixes and twenty two. Shooting some thirty out sixes, blowing stuff up. You know it. So we're going to uh, get you ready for the blast from the past, in which we are we're gonna we're gonna set you up with exactly the events that led up to this ruling. We're going to talk a little bit about the NRA, and Dimitri may have some new information about the NRA. That it's actually you know, old information, new information for me that I'll find very, that you might find very fascinating. And then, in the third segment, we'll actually get to talk about the third section of whatever. Oh God, I hate words. I really hate words. But we'll 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 get into the the meat of of the issue after we set it up, and then of course we'll end with some happy ending. And happy ending is basically. Uh, courts get it right. Blood from the past. Retracing the history, recent and distant, of self defense. All right, Dimitri, you've done the homework that you were given, so I know you got this. So go ahead. From mm-hmm. memory, let's start this off. We're going to start with the. Uh, we got uh, May 8, 1792, something happened. We got November 1871, something happened. And then in April 12th, 1873, something happened. And then it, it culminated in the uh, the 1878 ruling. So go ahead and uh, start us off with uh, what happened in 1792. Screw you. Oh! <laughs> I gave him the notes. He's like, yeah, I read him. I got him, man. I got him down. Listen. The, the, apparently, there are there's an argument out there as to why the NRA was actually founded. So we're gonna get we want to get. Yeah, to let's this start first. with that. Go, go ahead. Let, yeah, let's get this over and, with. Let's just let's just kill some sacred cows now. Yeah. It, and there's two sides of the argument. One side of the argument says that the NRA was founded to help abolitionists and Southern blacks who would be newly freed. Uh, protect themselves from the Southern Democrats known as the Ku Klux Klan and um, other um, malicious, nefarious organizations that were around at the time killing anyone who opposed the Southern Democrats in the South. That's argument number one. Argument number two is that the NRA was founded after the Civil War to make sure that that, uh, people who went into battle knew what the iron sights on top of their rifles and muskets were and what they were used for. Apparently, large numbers of people who were out in on the battlefield did not know. Something like 9 out of 
10 people didn't know what the iron sights were used for. And that's because their training didn't call them to aim. They just told them to point in that direction and inundate the enemy with a volley of fire. It looks like historic. what is historically accurate and at least documented is that the NRA was founded to as a marksmanship program to help people become better marksmen in, in, in battle. That so a lot of... So the 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 useful narrative that many conservatives use that the NRA was founded to arm blacks, you're going to give it a scoring if we're if, if this was politic fact, what scoring on a scale of one to ten would you give one to five would you give it in truthfulness? I don't know. I honestly don't know because what I suspect is that the NRA was in fact created for marksmanship. But I believe that abolitionists in the North used it to facilitate the arming of uh, blacks in the South. And that was not an official position on the NRA because they would have probably been attacked ruthlessly. Now, you, you, you do know that the NRA is founded in 1871, November. So you're, I, I don't know if you mean abolitionist or if you – maybe they did they still call themselves abolitionists after the war where they're still trying to well, empower I, blacks? W- my, the reason I call them abolitionists is because the people who were abolitionists prior to the war and during the war continued to be supportive of the newly freed blacks. So what would you want to call those people? I, I, call, I still would call them abolitionists because they wanted to abolish the slavery and persecution of southern blacks. Just because slavery was on paper uh, no more, that doesn't mean that blacks in the South weren't being persecuted horribly. They were. And, and, they, this, and they needed this episode support. is, is all and that's about what that. This is, yeah, and this is what we're leading into. Right. So yeah. those people I, I would continue to call abolitionists into the early 20th century because with the Jim Crow laws, there were groups in the North and some in the South that were trying to help the blacks not be so um, such second and third class citizens. So in December 3rd, 1791 the bill of rights is ratified and and <laughs> i find it very interesting and just a few months later the united states congress passes the uniform militia act requiring requiring all free white men between the ages of 18 and 45 to enroll in their state militias and the united states congress passes the uniform Militia Act, which requires all free white men between the ages of 18 and 45, requires all free white men between the ages of 18 and 45 to enroll in their state militias. In November of 1871, the National Rifle Association is founded by William Coney Church and George Wood Wingate. Disappointed by the gun skills of the men they had commanded during the Civil War, the two formal Former Union officers established the NRA to promote better marksmanship. During its first decades, the NRA builds rifle ranges, sponsors shooting competitions, and organizes gun safety courses. And then, uh, and then that leads us up to April 8, 12, 1873. And this is the event that led to the ruling, the, the event that led to the ruling. In Colfax... Louisiana, roughly 100 persons, most of them members of the black militia, are killed by a white gang, which includes many members of the Ku Klux Klan. The trials for the gang members responsible for the Colfax County Massacre will culminate in U.S. versus Crickshank. Now, you read over the notes here, and I don't know. I, I, I remember a little bit about this story, but I don't remember... Oh, I didn't remember all the details, but I also was not aware that this this event led to this ruling in 1878. What I don't understand is why I went to the Supreme Court and wasn't tried locally as murder, mass simple murder. Simple murder. I don't yeah. think they could get anybody to convict these guys on murder. Well, at, at the local level. Uh, it's a jury nullification. Nobody would convict them of murder. So they brought federal charges a- against them is what happened. So the federal charges were basically what you see in some cases today where the federal government will come after you for violating somebody's civil liberties, which 
because of the Civil Rights Act, the federal government now has legislation empowering it to do so, but at the time it didn't have the Civil Rights Act. By the way, uh, there's a lot of things I don't like about the Civil Rights Act. I certainly would say that part is okay. <laughs> the right. part that enables the federal government to come in and uh, bring some civil charges against folks who have violated the rights of others. But that's a sticky wicket, isn't it? And we don't do sticky. Actually, we're all about sticky wickets on this show, aren't we? This Maybe we should rename Full Auto the Sticky Wicket Show. What I mean, you, you can... You can identify with sticky wickets. I I have no idea what you're talking about. You I am I'm so beyond sticky wickets. It's not even funny. In Colfax, Louisiana, roughly 100 persons, and this is from WikiLeaks. Most of the members of a black militia are killed by a white gang, uh, and this happened on Eastern Sun Easter Sunday of all days, April 13th, 1873. An armed white militia attacked African American Republican freedmen who had gathered at the Grant Parish Courthouse in Colfax, Louisiana, to protect it from the pending Democrat takeover. Although some of the black people were armed and initially defended themselves, estimates were that 100 to as many as 280 were killed, most of them following surrender. Following surrender, including 50 being held prisoner that night. Three white people were killed. This was in the tense aftermath of months of uncertainty following the disputed gubernatorial election of November 1872 when two parties declared victory at the state and local levels. The election was still unsettled in the spring and both Republican and fusionists who carried Democratic backing had certified their own slates for the local offices of Sheriff Christopher Columbus Nash and Justice of the Peace in Grant Parish where Colfax is the parish seat. Federal troops reinforced the election of the Republican governor, William Pitt Kellogg. Some members of the, well, well, I tell you what, we're just about ready to go to break. And when we get back from break, we're going to then get a little bit more into this and a little bit more into ruling in the second segment. But folks, listen, we've got to pay our bills, right? Let's face it, everybody hates politicians and most government policies. And most libertarian shows spend their time talking about the non-aggression principle, philosophy, and who would build my roads. But not Liberty Lampoon. Every week we lambast politicians, public figures, policies, and print, all from a libertarian perspective. No one is safe. Our offensive interludes, brash rhetoric, and ad hominem attacks are just what the doctor ordered. We applaud those other shows for their good work. But at the end of the day, someone's got to call these monsters out. Look for Liberty Lampoon on your favorite podcast platform. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Liberty Lampoon for the most up-to-date hate speech against the state. So you started a local business and you're just waiting for the people to beat a path to your site. And waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, you can keep on waiting or you can get results with Real Blue Media. Get the results you want. More sales, more influence, votes, donors, whatever. Riga Blue Media offers a full range of new media and traditional media services for companies and organizations to communicate effectively and achieve their desired results. Well-connected, experienced, and highly ethical, we strive to meet your expectations and then exceed them time after time. Whatever your project, whether big or small, we have the people and the tools to serve you and make you a success. Call 717-503-1645 and schedule your free consultation today or visit us at regalbluemedia.com. That's regalbluemedia.com. 
tired of those guns that don't shoot themselves? Do you wish you, too, had one of those guns that shoots 30 clips a second? How about a gun with a bullet button that will convert your single-shot bolt-action rifle to an automatic assault weapon? Well, have we got the gun for you? You've heard all those politicians talking about this gun, but you didn't think it was real, right? Well, it's real. It's called the Super Duper Crap It's Real Gun. That's right, the Super Duper Crap It's Real Gun. And now, you can buy this gun for only $5 by just calling this number 1-800-GET-A-GUN. That's 1-800-GET-A-GUN. Just give us an address and pay COD when we deliver it. The Super Duper Crap It's Real Gun. Finally, an automatic assault weapon that will mow down your neighbors all by itself. Brought to you by the makers of Invisible Passports. The indestructible passport for the savvy terrorist that wants to make sure people remember him after he's gone. This gun may not be available in any of the 50 states or in any of the countries that exist on the planet today. If you do actually call 1-800-GET-A-GUN, you might not actually get through to an operator that's actually selling the Super Duper Crap It's Real Gun. This is a parody commercial intended to trigger the duties of your gun-phobic state-worshipping friends. Full Auto is intended for purely entertainment purposes and in relation to any actual person living or dead is purely coincidental. We are not responsible for the results that might be you should you ever actually take our advice about anything. Full Auto is a zip cap no-gov licensed show. This means you are free to reuse this content any way you see fit so long as you are not a representative or advocate of government. For more information, go to zipcap.org. And now, without further delay, here are your hosts, Dimitri and Paul. Alrighty, everybody, we are back in the saddle again. Why are you talking over the music, dude? I will talk over the music if I want to talk over the music, because I do what I want. I don't think anybody can hear you. I can hear everything you're saying, and none of it is entertaining. Not a word. Not a single word. Well, that's this whole show, isn't it? Oh! What did you say, son? (laughs) Oh! Look. You win this round, Dimitri. So, pick up where you left off. So let's, Quickly. yeah, yeah, because because this is a short segment here. So uh, I want to get through this. So some members of the white mob were indicted and charged under the Enforcement Act of 1870 because hmm. they couldn't find anybody that would hold these guys accountable. Because you know, the act had been designed primarily to allow federal enforcement and prosecution of actions of the KKK and other secret vigilante groups in preventing black people from voting and murdering them. That's always good. Among other provisions, the law made it a felony for two or more people to conspire to deprive any one of his constitutional rights. The white defendants were charged with 16 counts divided into two sets of eight each. Among the charges included violating the freedmen's rights to lawfully assemble, to vote, and... More importantly for our show, to bear arms. And then uh, in, uh, in uh, I said 1878, didn't I? You did. I'm in 1876. I hope that you people don't beat me for getting the year wrong. But... So it was 1976. That would be the 100 years. Yeah, 1976 wow. would be the 100 That makes years. all the difference in the world. And, and, and in 1976, nothing really fantastic happened. I was two you. years younger. For me, things happened in 1976. I was eight years old in 1976, and I remember that year. Oh, well, I remember Elton John, Feel up to be a freedom. Remember that song? Yeah. I remember when it was new, folks. I remember when it was new. In 1876, the United States Supreme Court in U.S. versus Craig Shank ruled that the Second Amendment does not guarantee an individual right to a right To keep and bear arms. It only protects, that's right, it only protects the state's rights to maintain militias. In the ruling, uh, the, get down here to the. What? What? 
So the majority opinion, the Supreme Court ruled that the court did not incorporate the Bill of Rights to the states. The court opined about the dualistic nature of the U.S. political system. There is in our political system of government each of the several states and a government of the United States. Each is distinct from the others and has citizens of its own who owe its allegiance and uh, owe its allegiance and whose rights within its jurisdiction it must protect. The same person may be at the same time a citizen of the United States and a citizen of a state, but his rights of citizenship under one of these governments will be different from those he has under the other. The ruling also states that all U.S. citizens, all U.S. citizens are subject to two sub-governments. And essentially what this ruling did is it, 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 it flew open the doors for another segment that we're going to get to eventually. We'll probably do multiple shows on the Black Coats. What? Crickets. You're not responding. Wow. You're, is there something because wrong it, with you, Demetri? Did you not eat your Wheaties this morning? Law or did you? is fickle. And the interpretation of law is fickle. Yes, there is no rule of law. There's only rule of power. That's Correct. absolutely true. And it, it, it kind of shows it here in what happened with this ruling. That the Supreme Court, I, I believe that the Supreme Court really wanted to figure out a way that uh, these uh, white guys weren't going to get prosecuted. Correct. And they were willing to bend the law, bend the language, in such a way so as to free these black guys and enable free white people white in guys. the South. I mean, free these white guys and enable white people in the South to keep them blacks in their places. Because from the end of the Civil War to to really to this period of time, there was kind of a renaissance that was going on in the black community as uh, there were there were black towns that were being built, businesses, there were black legislators i mean it was they were becoming a part of the republic in the south in a very significant and meaningful and, way and they were 30 percent of the population and they were 30 percent of the population and that was a serious problem for the for the white and, democrats and, and you south. think about it what did they do the whites uh for for a lot of reasons are wrong the whites essentially and i, I won't i want to speak for every white but i'm talking about the whites that would agree with this type of behavior that they sacrificed their security, their, their freedom, their liberty for, for uh, security, because the type of tyranny that it allows at the state level, it allows against everyone, whether you're white or black. And you'll see that being played out as well. They were, they became secure against the, from the blacks. In yes. The South. Yeah. Well, they became secure against the blacks that they wow. could, keep the blacks in their place they could go out and do what had to be done wow to keep them in their place and we'll be back on the other side we oh, will talk yeah in more we detail. got some talking to do what does all this mean broadcast freedom is obviously important to you but unfortunately whatever small fraction of freedom you have left is disappearing rapidly as leviathanic governments continue to pass law after law restricting your natural right to your person and property you also know that freedom can't be won through the slave suggestion system known as politics things can seem hopeless but freedom is more possible than you realize. Liberty Under Attack presents the Direct Action Series, your guide to finding freedom now without asking for permission. It includes over 40 hours of pure solutions presented to you in an advertisement-free format with bonus content. You can get your copy of the Direct Action Series for only $10. And while supplies last, you'll receive an LUA Voluntarist Koozie for simply supporting LUA. What are you waiting for? Visit libertyunderattack.com backslash freedom now to secure your copy today. Again, libertyunderattack.com backslash freedom now. And make sure to tune in to LUA Radio Live at 7 p.m. Central every Thursday and Sunday on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. Have you ever asked yourself the question, who do you call when the police are harassing you? What if you're an activist and need help? Who do you trust enough to ask for help when your car breaks down or when you're being bullied at school or need medical help? What about a terrorist attack or a mass shooting? 
Well, Cell 411 is a fantastic new app that allows you to issue real-time emergency alerts to your family, neighbors, or friends, to one of them or many, in an instant with the tap of a finger. The emergency alert includes your exact GPS coordinates and your trusted friends will get turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location so they can come and help you in need. You'll be notified of an ETA, who's coming to help you, and when they'll arrive at your location. All this happens within seconds. Cell 411 is changing the way humans are handling emergencies all over the world. And the best thing about it is that it's completely free. It's not dependent on government or decades-old analog telephone networks to function. Whether you're a student, parent, neighborhood watcher, or activist, this app is for you. Give it a try and download it today from GetCell411.com. How you spell this? One, and then eight hundred is two zeros, right? All right. So get. Wait a minute. How do I type type letters? I don't know how to dial letters. Oh, right, there are little letters next to the numbers. Okay, that might be it. So G is four, E, T, A, G, O. No, no, it's U, 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 N. All right. Give me one of them guns, mow down everybody. It's gonna be great. Thank you for Delta Machinery Inquiry Service. Wait. Press one to locate the Delta distributor nearest you, what or for product information. Press two for technical service, technical. or to no, order part directly from Delta. Press three for the number of the Delta International Machinery Headquarters. Delta International Press Machinery four to repeat options. I didn't go one. Product service. Office hours on Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. If this is a true medical emergency, please hang up and dial 911 or oh, go to the nearest emergency room. Medical if emergency. If you are concerned about routine office matter, please press zero to speak with the at-the-hours dispatcher. What? If you are a researcher... No, I just need one of them guns. If you have questions for the doctor... No, I need that gun that mows people... Lady, dispatcher. can you hear me? I need a gun that mows everybody down. I tell you what, that guy in that show told me about it. Wait, wait, no, you disconnected me. Oh, hell, it's terrible customer service, man. I'll just go back to Smith & Wesson. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Hey! Hello there. I didn't see you there. That's because I'm invisible. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I'm just... Uh, I'm just sitting here cleaning my super-duper crack with super new gun gun. Wow. Yeah. Got that bullet bug working, so... Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to mow people down! Wait, no, I'm not. Why are not you yelling? Really. The music ended. Not really, not really, because the music ends. That's just mm. the, the the trailing end. But now we're into the juicy part. So, dude, I want to go ahead and give the you juicy the floor to start tidbits. us off. Oh my god, we're into the juicy part. Wait, so I have to understand something. The South loses the war. For the South, it was the federal government and the Northerners who were trying to impose their will on them, who were the enemy, who they needed saving from, and now. You have a bunch of unarmed, poverty-stricken, freed slaves who are now the enemy. Well, so, they, they, they were becoming armed, and they were becoming not so poverty-stricken. Right, well, because they were, they were industrious, creative, hard-working, yes. and, yeah, their families were still intact, and they had yes. culture that they were drawing from. Yes. But still... A vital community was emerging. But still, the federal government... Is, was no longer seen as the problem down there, and they needed to be saved from. At least the Supreme Court was trying to save them from 
from these uppity blacks. Yeah, they they had to figure out a way around it, uh, around these folks that I, they they murdered one hundred a uh, hundred to as many as two hundred and eighty people. They murdered them. You couldn't find a white jury. The account to that I had read them in the South. The account that I had read about this incident was it was over three hundred people had been murdered. Um, so it, whether, whatever the number, whether it was a hundred or three hundred, it's awful. No matter how you slice it, they surrounded these folks, and then after the folks surrendered, they killed them. And who did they surrender to? They surrendered to the to the white folks, to the Southern Democrats, right? To the Southern Democrats, right? And uh, these folks were Republicans. They were they all were, registered Republicans, and there were a couple of white Republicans down there too who were. Abolitionists. Oh yeah, there, there were there were who were also murdered. It, it said three white people died. Now I'm not sure if the three white people that died were not the the white people that were standing with him because there were white people standing with them. They were the the account that I had read were was that there were the white folks that were there were Republicans and they were murdered by the white Democrats. Yeah, they would have to murder them too. So what what you have here is if you think that the Bill of Rights is some sort of magic protection for you, when push comes to shove, the rule of law is what the Supreme Court says it is. And the Supreme Court, it has nothing that holds it in check, nothing that holds it in co- accountable. Technically, it's supposed to. Technically, the uh, Congress does have some rights to check the Supreme Court, but it it hasn't happened certainly hasn't happened in recent memory and it didn't happen here the supreme court essentially ruled that oh no 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 that that whole that that's just that's just that just applies to the federal government not infringing on your rights but it's it's it, it doesn't go beyond that if the state wants to infringe on your rights that's that's something altogether and and the 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 more significant ruling is because they needed a workaround. They had to find the loopholes, and language always has loopholes. They were willing to lessen the definition of, of what the Second Amendment meant from a general right that everyone had to a right that was only applied to the state militia. So it's almost like the states have a right to bear arms, but you as an individual don't. This opened up the door for all kinds of of, of things. Most Abuse. of which would happen in the South, and a lot of it would come through in, in the, the, the black codes. Well, not just the black codes, but also when the unions were f- formulating and, and uh, people were being exploited by large industry, when they had rallies, the Pinkertons and the National Guard would show up armed, and the people who were protesting... And marching. Yeah, the people who were gun. protesting didn't have any, quote-unquote, right to bear arms. And they were the getting killed. The militias, the Pinkertons, recognized by the, the federal government, they had the right to bear arms. So I've talked before about the cost of coercion, that one entity will take advantage of another entity if the cost of coercion is low. Well, what the federal government essentially is doing is it's lowering the cost of coercion. And what it did when we talked, and we talked before about the, the the miners, what essentially the federal government was doing was protecting the coercers and therefore lowering the cost of coercion because the folks being coerced, the folks that were told that this is the deal you're going to get, and then they didn't get that deal, and then they said, "Hey, man, you know we want a better deal." They in 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 a free world, in a free place. There would have been a, a a a forceful response to the forceful effort to coerce them, and you would have found pretty quickly that two sides would have found a more agreed agreeable uh, term between them. But instead, the federal government comes in with the Pinkerton agents, and you end up with the miners continuing yeah, just the to get screwed. In many cases, they came in with the National Guard. And then what you have afterwards is everybody looks, the progressives look back at that and say, see, capitalism. Now that's that's not capitalism. That's not a fr- Well, I won't say that is or it isn't capitalism. I don't want to get into the discussion of what is or isn't capitalism, but I'll say this. It's not a free market, 
and it is the result of government intrusion. The government didn't save anyone. The government caused the problem, and then later the government will enact rules and regulations uh, to ostensibly help the miners, rules and regulations that would not have been needed had the miners been allowed to respond in kind to the force. So the government the creates the problems for you, and then the government comes and solves the problems for you. Kind of like security now, you know. Uh, you know, terrorism on our shores can be argued that it's our government that's kind of caused some of these problems, and now it's coming in to help us with all of these new agencies that are going to protect us from ourselves and others. You mean like the Department of Homeland Security? I didn't want to say that. I wanted, didn't want to go on their radar, but I guess – go ahead. <laughs> I think we're on their radar. I mean we're, we're a tiny, tiny little blipperty blippo on their radar, but at I think at some level – We're a roach's turd. <laughs> yeah, we're like – yes, the we are. Turd. We're like – there's a million roaches – and then one of the roaches let down a turd among many turds that that roach will have left down. Worth that one turd. Yes. <laughs> That's where we're at on their but, radar. But getting back to the subject here, it, a lot of the Jim Crow laws in the South come straight out of this. And those Jim Crow laws that existed in the late 1800s and early 1900s, they don't go away. They just morph into something different. And – I have, as I've said many times, and we'll follow Jim this Crow history through our show. Jim Crow is alive and well because when predominantly black communities around the country, pre predominantly in urban areas, are denied the right to de defend themselves, we're back in the late 1800s. It, it's and it's whether it's from criminals or runaway cops, which I don't think is that big of an issue, but whatever the perceived threat is, blacks in the inner cities can't get guns. Yeah. They and can. if they that's, do... That's not going to happen. No, well, and if they do legally, choose to protect themselves... Quote, unquote, legally. Yeah, now they've opened up a whole separate can of worms. To do the right thing, to do the... God, to do what God has given you the authority to do, which is to protect your life and your well-being and that of your loved ones, opens up a can of worms with the with the state and with the federal government that the which ramification the ramifications of which are horrific because that in and of itself destroys inner city black families arresting people for protecting themselves destroys the families. Never mind when you couple that with what the drug wars do to uh, these communities and how essentially the drug wars fi uh, fund the operations of the mob, whatever you want to call it, the gangs, the mobs, all of that. But it also funds the operation of the, of the uh, prisons. Of the police departments, well, yeah, of rescue yeah. teams, of fire departments, it funds a lot of things. It's a money maker in a lot of ways. Oh. It's a money maker. It's a it's a it's a population controller in a lot of ways. A lot of cops would lose their jobs if drugs were made legal, and a lot of corrections officers would lose their jobs, and a lot of judges would lose their jobs, and a lot of lawyers would lose their jobs, and a lot of the state would shrink the minute they lifted the prohibition on controlled substances. Yeah, and if you are I I I've kind of made this unity call recently which is I will uh I'm interested in walking with people that at at one level or another they want to see more people empowered to be able to depend less and less on on state institutions. And if you want to see that one of the Major steps that we can take, we who want to see that happen, is to end the war on drugs. Because the war on drugs, it, it's whether you're for or against drug use. And me personally, I'm I'm not really for drug use. But if you're for or against, the drug war is one of the most powerful tools that the state has to justify many of the rules and regulations that it has put in place, which are designed not to stop the drug war, 
but to stop you, to, 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 uh, I guess, confine you within a space of their choosing. So we're, this is a interesting show that we're doing here because we're going to have to get used to doing these segments. Uh, this is this, this, this topic, we could go on a lot longer, uh, just, just dealing with this topic alone. And hopefully we touched upon some of the, the key parts, both in terms of the history and in terms of the philosophy under it and, and, and what it's led to on the other side, we are going to get into, we haven't let you down. We're going to get into... What are we going to do next? Do you know, Dimitri? Do you know? Not dude? a clue. I'm spacing Dude, out. it's happy ending. Just endings. talking and talking. Happy I'm zoning endings out, on the dude. other side. Zoning out. On the other side. Happy endings. When you court rulings don't suck. Protection. Ah. Full Auto is intended for purely entertainment purposes. Any relation to any actual person, living or dead, is purely coincidental. We are not responsible for the results that might befall you. Did you ever actually take our advice about anything? Full Auto is a zip tap no gov licensed show. This means you are free to reuse this content any way you see fit, so long as you are not a representative or advocate of government. For more information, go to zipcat.org. The Freedom Fiends now have a free app for your Android phone, tablet, phablet, or other Chrome robot turd available now from the Google Play Store, Amazon, and FreedomFiends.com. Lovingly handcrafted by head hamster Michael W. Dean, the artisanal Freedom Fiends radio app allows you to listen live, keep up with the podcast, chat directly with other fiends, get discounts on bigger buttons, brainwash yourself with a 24-7 random episode, and so much more. You know the Freedom Fiends is the best libertarian radio show in the world, but when the fiends aren't live, you can use the app to listen to LRN.FM from anywhere. The Freedom Fiends radio app is like having a virtual libertarian re-education camp in your pocket. It's your gateway to the exclusive high-demand group that is the Freedom Fiends. Install the Freedom Fiends radio Android app today. It's free and, of course, it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Tell two friends, review it on Google Play and Amazon, prepare for the inevitable death of terrestrial radio, and get ready for LibPair with the Freedom Fiends radio app for Android Worms. Worms. Do you have a group or organization founded on the principles of personal liberty, health freedom, or accountable government? We invite you to check out Same Side Entertainment. Get connected with leaders in the liberty movement like Tom Woods, Kevin Gutzman, Jack Hunter, Robert Scott Bell, Michael Scheuer, and many more. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our website at www.samesideentertainment.com. Again, that's www.samesideentertainment.com. Same Side Entertainment, connecting you with the education and resources you need. By name. You are watching a demonstration of the most authentic cap pistol in the world. It has exclusive fanning action and shoots safe shooting shells with greeny stickum caps. The gun and hip slung Mattel holster are specially made for a fast draw. All of Mattel's shooting shell fanners and holsters carry the true stamp of the Old West. And every boy will walk tall when he wears a holster and pistol with a Mattel brand. You can tell it's Mattel, it's swell. So you started a local business? And you're just waiting for the people to beat a path to your site. And waiting, and waiting, and waiting. Well, you can keep on waiting, or you can get results with Real Blue Media. Get the results you want. More sales, more influence, votes, donors, whatever. Regal Blue Media offers a full range of new media and traditional media services for companies and organizations to communicate effectively and achieve their desired results. Well-connected, experienced, and highly ethical, we strive to meet your expectations and then exceed them time after time. Whatever your project, whether big or small, we have the people and the tools to serve you and make you a success. Call 717-503-1645 and schedule your free consultation today. Or visit us at regalbluemedia.com. That's regalbluemedia.com. (laughs) 
Hey, you like that happy music? I love it. Happy music time. Did you take your compliance? Yes, I did. Oh, well, no, I didn't actually. I think oh, that's I my did. Problem. You I'm took nice. the compliance. You're and nice. I did not. Woo-ha! I welcome our government overlords. Our government overlords are our family. We are in. Happy ending. Use protection. Use full, full protection. Well, oh. you'll hear that in the bump, man, because I'm about ready to play the bump. Protection. But this happy ending is about a Sandy Hook ruling, also titled a uh, court ruling that doesn't suck. Nice. How often do you get happy those? Happy ending. Remember, folks, use full protection. And ladies and gentlemen, Dimitri has totally memorized this whole section here. So I'm going to hand it over to Dimitri. I'm going to be silent. Go ahead. I take it you didn't memorize this. Is, this is from... I'm going to do this for the rest of the show. We only have four minutes on this, dude. Oh, keep talking. <laughs> okay. This is from Patch.com. I will strangle you in your sleep if you keep this up. Yes, I will. Yes, I'm... Well, did I just touch your foot? Did I just... <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get to this. A federal George judge has dismissed a lawsuit brought by the families of Sandy, Sandy Hook victims, and I'm reading from Patch.com here. Uh, uh, they were uh, uh, suing uh, Remington Arms, the maker of the rifle used in the elementary school shooting that left 20 children and six educators dead. In dismissing the lawsuit, George, George, Judge Barbara Bellis wrote in her decision that Congress, through the protection of the Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, PLCAA has broadly prohibited lawsuits against manufacturers, distributors, dealers, and importers of firearms for the harm solely caused by the criminal or unlawful misuse of firearm products. Uh, the lawsuit was, well, I don't care whether the Your lawsuit woman was fired. sucks. Uh, but law firm. is sexist, too, but go ahead. What, what did you just call me? Your, your woman voice sucks. Dude, I do all kinds of uh, and creepy voices. Off I always try to use too. a creepy voice. You could have just I'm doing. read it like. You know, you just love it, and you're just jealous that you can't do a voice like that. But we're running out of time here, dude. dude Law firm Costco, Costco, and Blighter argued that the Bushmaster AR-15 rifle shouldn't have been released to the public and belongs only in the hands of military and law enforcement personnel. Well, the families are obviously disappointed with the judge's decision. This is not the end of the fight, said one of the Wiener lawyers. We will appeal this decision immediately and continue our work to help blah, 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 blah. Now you're sounding anti-Wienerist. I am anti-Wienerist. I Dude. am definitely anti If Wiener is deci- de- defined as somebody who thinks that they have some sort of right to lobby an entity with guns to try to show up and take my guns. Yeah, I'm going to call him a wiener. That's what a wiener is, and I'm anti. Are you pro wienerist? You're doing the show full auto, and now you're going to. Are you coming out of the wiener closet? Is the man's name Dick? His name is not Dick. His oh, Josh Ko- Koskoff. Oh, I thought he was Dick from Koskoff, Koskoff, and Biter. Oh, Tool. I thought one of them was Tool. Also, should have been. <laughs> I'm I'm uh I'm really thinking that uh one of them should have been named Tool. I think Tool would be the other one Richard. Richard Richard and Tool. Richard uh, Tool. Cranium somewhere in Dick there. Dick Tool. Work that Dick in there. Tool cranium would have been Yeah. Dick Tool, Richard Cranium, yeah. all that stuff that I'm just listen, I'm just reading the script that Dimitri wrote, so don't judge me. But there that, that's your happy ending. That is folks. huge. That that uh, a judge actually decided not to rule against you having guns and not to basically enable people to set a precedent that would put all gun manufacturers out of business in America. I'm surprised that Remington makes the Bushmaster. I thought Bushmaster was its own company. Mm, I don't know. Is it under a parent company? That's, that's a, Remington that's, was purchased by another company. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a discussion for another show. It is. And and we're not we're not prepared to have that discussion. You have Google, right? 
I do have Google. Well, use it. I could Google it right now, but I don't feel like Googling it because we're just about done with this segment. This so is, why would I we sit need here a two hour show, and Google dude. I'm it? Just getting started. You know what? We, I think I I'm think, just waking up, and this show I know. Is ending. I, I Are you think it's me? something to think about. We may talk about the possibility. Oh, man, of doing a two hour show, and that's been your happy ending, folks. We'll be right back with the show wrap up, in which Dimitri will tell us in Greek. Why he's pro wiener. Full auto is intended for purely entertainment purposes and in relation to any actual person living or dead is purely coincidental. We are not responsible for the results that might befall you. Did you ever actually take our advice about anything? Full auto is a zip cut no gov license show. This means you are free to reuse this content any way you see fit so long as you are not a representative or advocate of government. For more information, go to zipcut.org. Hey, everybody! So, Don't talk over this music. So, you know, we, 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 we let's awesome decide music. right now. Are we going to do an after show or not? Yes or no to the after show. Right now. Do you have Google handy? The after the, we, we can do an after show. We can talk a little bit more detail. Or we, we should. Okay. We, we're, we should. We're, there will be an after show. Can't promise you an after show with every show. But this time, there will be an after show. And I want to say this. Uh, while I remember it this time, we want to thank... Our our new uh, uh, basically we have a, a new affiliate uh, a syndicate affiliate I don't know what you call it, to call it ipmnation.com now syndicates our show which we carry Tuesday nights which you can see it on speaker and you can also uh, listen to it on ipmnation.com and uh, we're also working on getting on TuneIn and a number of other stuff as well so we're expanding our horizons i also want to make note that yes we did get once again over 100 live listeners for our Woo-hoo! last show now we we keep getting new listens so i'm not sure where we're, we'll be at with the, uh the, the last show i think last i checked we had 170 somewhere around there listens but the show before that is now over 300 listens so, woo we crossed the 300 mark, Do you remember when it was gentlemen? three listeners, like you, me, and your moms? Yes, exactly. That was... Yes, I know. That was a threshold, because we, we got her to listen. You know, it was a lot less stressful then. When, it was. When it was just, no pressure. We didn't want just these, me and my moms. Yeah, these, my moms was all these commercials, making, and we have to get our facts right now. Oh, yeah, I mean, now, this is stupid. Now we have to actually, yeah, I, I, I get... I get uh, I, I get Facebook messages. And we, I get people. hate mail. Do you get hate mail? They say I hate ball. Get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually the one because I can't stand you. But your wife pays me well, so she I keep certainly you on does. The show. She, she, she certainly she does. does. She pays me very well. She pays me in Bitcoin, and that's a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving Don't to the after the show. Music. You, oh my god, this music you're a rocks. Human being. What you is this? You just don't like to rock. You just don't like to rock it out. What is this? This is we're preparing you for the next for the after show. This is getting you lubed up for the after show. And there's gonna be a little thing coming up here, folks. Don't worry. You'll know we're going to the after show when you hear. You wow, that was awesome. The after show, the after show, the after show. This is the after show you're listening to. The after show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the after show. Okay, featuring. the music was good. The intro to the after show sucked. What? I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? You're saying, what, what, the music was rocking it? Oh my but God, what was that? Like who that? did that? Dude, I got to find out who that is. Yeah, That's... The after- that's uh, that's my my my. That's actually. I, I was gonna say that's my Garage Band, but it's not. You wish that was it, your it's, Garage it's Band. It's copyright free music, dude. That's, that's the kind of music you put on 
loud in your car and drive 100 miles an hour into a bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. Into sorry. a bridge? <laughs> I'm sorry. Into a bridge? I said how do much. you drive into a bridge? I uh, just want to know. That would how be you the column that. of a bridge on the highway. They have into column. a bridge column sounds more. Okay. Sounds like it makes more sense than into right. a bridge. Yeah. Language is new for you. How long have you been using it? Not very long. Just the just the just forty seven years. About, about forty seven. Yeah. You got a ways to go, son. You we know? do. You got a ways to go. So we are in the after show. What is it? Uh, well, usually, when we get to the after show, it'll be we have like three or four topics that we talked about. We decide which one to go into more detail. We could go into more detail for happy ending, or we could, or we could talk about something completely you know, different. What would you in, like? In talking about what happened in the South with the Jim Crow laws and guns and the Supreme Court and Southern Klan members and the Southern Democrats versus the Republicans, you know, there's. There's something that happens, it's happening, and will continue to happen. And there, that just struck me like a lightning bolt when you were playing that music. There is a fundamental difference in culture between country folk and city folk. People who are living in the cities are far more dependent on the services of the state and far more willing to give up rights to the state to protect them. They're, they're willing to give up their gun rights. They're, they're willing to vote Well, they don't perceive in, that they need them. Right. Well, some do. But most Many don't. Do. But they, the they're, they're willing to vote people in who are willing to take away their freedoms and their rights for protection. Where in the country, people are far more independent, and they want their own abilities to protect themselves they don't want to depend on the state and what is what strikes me i mean and this is huge because this is true in most of the places where i've traveled now i haven't traveled the whole world but i've been to some scandinavian countries where the people in helsinki and stockholm are willing to give up their rights, liberties, and freedoms, where the people in Lahti and some of the smaller towns in Finland and Stock and, and Sweden and Norway are ruggedly independent and they want their guns. It's the same thing in Greece. It's the same thing in France. It's the same thing in Germany. It's the same thing in the United States, whatever state you go to, or Canada or Mexico or any other part of the world. There are two fundamental cultures that seem to be Coming to fruition across the world, where 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 do the suburbs folks fit into that? That is a good question. I don't because know. There are transitions now. It yeah. used to be it was pretty much city and, and and rural, but now now we have transition stages in varying degrees. Of these transitions from city to rural. So so where do those folks fit in? I don't know. I think but, there's a lot of both in that in that suburban. You probably have more of a balanced view within those communities than you do, say, the rural is probably tilted heavily towards uh, less government intrusion. And yes, yeah, so you're making fun of my talking with my hands, and I because I don't know hands. if you're you're motioning me to wait five minutes or nope. if you're just. No, waving just, your just, hand at me. I just, I just the the motion that oh. I put up was like less, less government, less, less. Okay, it's, it's Paul language. It's a uh, Paul signage. You got to learn Paul signage. Or in the cities, it's more extreme that they favor more government intrusion. I I wrote something a long, long time ago, a few years ago, or uh, that I called the Freedom Box, and the Freedom Box theory, as I espoused it, is. Not everybody needs the same amount of freedom. And if you don't need a lot of freedom, you have a perception that you're free even when you're not. It's kind of, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a simple explanation for you. And I'll go back to the cockroach because we all realize that we're just a cockroach turd on this show as far as the Department of Homeland Security is, is concerned. A cockroach in a... Uh, a big pot, a cockroach may very well feel like, feel like, yeah, I got some room here, man. I feel good. This is my space. This is my jams. I'm feeling comfortable. Look, I got stuff protecting me from other cockroaches. Yeah, this is, this is the jammy jam. 
But now you take the cockroach out and you put in a mouse. Mouse is a little bit bigger. Mouse may still feel somewhat free, but may feel a little bit of restraint. Now put a bunny rabbit in that pot. And that bunny rabbit is going to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in jail. I'm in prison. That's people in, in the rural, uh, in, in, in the, what's the word I'm looking for? Countryside. In the countryside. The, the agrarian folks. They, they, they really do. They have to be more self-reliant. There's not as many people around. They got to be able to take care of themselves. They got to feel like they have the power, the right to do what they got to do to take care of themselves. So when they see these laws, rules, regulations passed, which uh, encroach on their ability to do that, they feel the crush. They're the bunny rabbit in the pot. And the city folk are the cockroach in the pot. They feel like, hey, dude, this is cool. We're protected. It's good. You know, them rural folks ain't going to show up with their guns and try to do stuff to it. We're good. So I think I think that's the dynamic that we're seeing here. Do you call that your freedom box? Freedom box, you which I it- then... I should have just used a box. I used, I, 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 I called have, the freedom box theory and I, I, and I proceeded to use the pot metaphor. Yeah. Because that's you what you should have do. used the freedom cage. Freedom cage. I think that's more appropriate because well, we're all in a cage to some degree. Okay. Uh, you're, a, you're a slave to the state. You're, you, you're not a to, to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're but not you can also argue that somebody that's in a prison locked up that within, where they're at, you know, they make, they make decisions. They they haven't they they haven't conformed for whatever reason. That within them, they're still free. I mean, physically, they're not free, but within who they are and how they've chosen to live, they're they're still free. They're living as a free person, a free person who has been locked up, but they're still free to a certain extent. So, I don't want to say that we're not capable of experience freedom experiencing freedom from within, but the more freedom from within that you seek to live on the outside, the more you will come to the realization that you're not as free as you think you are. Just like the folks in the South, the the black folks in the South that suddenly on paper, what looked like them, their words, them, their special uh, magic powers written on paper. Hey, they had the right to be free. They had the right to live out their lives, to self be self-determined, to build their own communities, their own vibrant culture. What you think, uh, what, what America would have been if these black communities had been al- al- allowed to develop and grow as, as, as they were, as, as it looked like they were going to grow. How many more, uh, vital, in, uh, intellectual, creative, innovative, enterprising people would we have today if we had allowed these communities to follow what I would argue was the natural course. The unnatural course was that they were choked off. When they started to live their freedom, they soon discovered, and I don't know whether they made the full realization, they soon discovered what I say all the time. There is no rule of law. There is only rule of power. And I see it differently. Go ahead. I see. I they never had their freedom to live it. They were just used as pawns to get the other side, meaning the Southern Democrats, to find something else to attack. Instead of attacking and being starting like guerrilla warfare against the Northern forces that were down in the South occupying them, now they were given a new target. They were they were redirected to target the blacks. And then to be saved from the blacks by the Supreme Court. I think it was all intentional, and it's still intentional. Get this side, to fight with that side. I think the Obama administration has proven that uh, the government is there to cause chaos and keep the system unstable. You're constantly pitting one side against the other, whether it's the – I mean, 100 years ago, it was the Irish. Now it's the Mexicans. There will always be that new group. Oh, well, no, it's the Mexicans, it's the Muslims. Right, exactly. Whatever, whatever group that you can identify as the, the fundamental threat to your way of life. And if you want your way of life protected, uh, can we create another department that of course. has and then more power? Throw into the mix, now you have 
those crazy people with guns. They're they're going to murder everyone. You got to go after them. Well, if they have the super duper crap, it's real gun. You can't you Dude, can't deny that's, that. You're, that. They're done. That's it. It's if over. you have the super duper crap, it's real gun. Everyone is done. Yes. Everyone is done. So Actually, that so then the, these Jim Crow laws, as they evolve, uh, they really serve one purpose, and that's to keep blacks in an unstable situation so you can continue to exploit them as the boogeyman. Yeah, I I basically, for me personally, I have whittled it down to what I believe is the core, the core I don't know how I'm going to word this, the, the, the core empowering principle of those who wish to expand the power of of state enterprise, if you will. And that is competition. The desire to coercively end competition is what the state enterprise relies on you wanting and feeling to give it the tacit and sometimes explicit approval to coerce against others, even to a certain degree to coerce against yourself. So what you saw in the South where whites, and I, I'm, and when I say whites, I want to say I, I'm not speaking of all people in the South who were white. Uh, I'll say I'm speaking of a certain group of whites, whether they are the majority or not. I believe they probably were the majority at the time at least, and somebody can prove me wrong that wanted to use the power of the state to assure that their beliefs, their values, their way of life, their status was protected and that people who were who were who were building a competitive alternative to their way of life, their status if you will, were were kept from competing in a fair way. And then you don't respond to that. I thought for sure you had a response. And you went all fetal on me. I guess I was too... I, I overwhelmed you with truth and you you went fetal. Right now he's actually on the floor. Get, get off the floor. Get out of that fetal position. Get in your chair and do the show that you were... Well, I guess you weren't paid to do. But just do the show. Go ahead. No pressure. I asked you earlier today to shoot me that YouTube video that you had shot me about different forms of slavery. Remember that? I do remember that video. And, and although this is not a political show, we just talk about guns and stuff, this is important because this is going to truly govern where our state goes and how your gun rights will evolve or devolve because they will. Because depending on what narrative the state wants you to believe and understand. And uh, in the 1800s, there was a different narrative that they wanted. So they used the Supreme Court to advance that. In the 20th century, it was a different narrative. So they advanced that as well. So things will change radically in your lifetime and mine. But if you... I, I want to plug this video... Um, the story of your enslavement because it really does outline. If you could just go on YouTube and, and enter that, you'll find the video. It really does outline. It is a brilliantly done YouTube video that outlines how taxes are essentially a form of slavery and how you may believe that you are free. But that freedom box that you talk about is actually getting smaller and smaller for most people. Well, I and, would say the the actual freedom that you have is getting smaller and smaller. But coincidentally, sadly, the level of freedom that people feel that they need to get what they want is also decreasing for a lot of folks. And I, I don't know whether it's majority. I, I I think it's probably not a majority of people, but I I think it's certainly a significant minority, maybe thirty, forty percent. Who knows of people that 
they really they don't they they want it's almost like they want less freedom they want things to be more clearly defined for them they want their viewpoints their way of life protected and guaranteed and the other side to be punished and 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 hemmed in and not allowed to feed, the, to compete at a at a you know on a fair level playing well field. watch the video because they go through that they and they go through how that percentage of people will target those who are freedom minded and seeking freedom and identifying the reality that is before you and how they will attack and destroy anyone who calls out the uncomfortable truth about being to some degree a slave to the system. Right. And we'll make it clear here that we are not advocating for ending anything or not ending anything or beginning anything or, or beginning Just anything. Being, the only being thing that aware. we advocate for on this show is we have a fundamental right to self-defense and self-reliance and self-defense and self-reliance means that as you can and as you can help others decrease your reliance on state enterprises, the power of state enterprises to coerce you, to control you, becomes less and less. It is much easier to control people who have very small freedom boxes and don't have a means to do anything about it. You look at what happened in, in this ruling here where – you have uh, – what is this ruling called again? i got to go look it up because I have a terrible memory. This so you're is, saying you didn't prepare well enough for the show. I prepared very, very – Very, 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 I even did sound checks and everything to try to get the audio better. Always looking to improve. Uh, in Colfax, Louisiana, what you had was you, you came face-to-face with the reality that the black community at that time – did not have the real power to say no to coercion and the cost of coercion for the white community. Well, they knew it was pretty low. They knew that they could go in without any accountability and murder black people. And they did it. But then the cost of coercion was lowered even more with the 1876 ruling that basically gave him a pass and said, basically, in so many words, what the federal government said was, you got our back. We got your back. The very federal government that many will claim went to war to free the blacks, to end slavery at the cost of hundreds of thousands of lives lost on both sides, that very same federal government pretty much said to the South, we got your back. It's almost like the federal government was like, dudes, listen, man, we told you we're not we're not against slavery. We're just against that type of slavery. We have we have evolved. We're more sophisticated. Now we have we have created a system in which everyone is a slave. Just go along. And so what you have then in the South soon after is, well, there was a lot more murders, lynchings, all all types of stuff that happened really up until I mean I don't I mean at a at a regular rate maybe you know the late 60s, the late 1960s. So for nearly 100 years after this ruling, it unleashed the demons in the south and and basically Did it unleash them or did it create them? I don't I don't know. It maybe it I think created, it created them. them. Could could very well have created them. You know, and you have a ruling like Plessy versus Ferguson that happens, uh, you know, shortly after, where you have the separate but equal ruling, where you're, you're kind of like there. The federal government is like acknowledging that, yeah, yeah, you can view black people as being inferior to you, and you can coercively do something about it. I, I personally, I don't view anybody as being inferior to anybody, but if you want to have that view, that's up to you. I'm not trying to criminalize the view. I'm trying to crim- uh, I'm trying to empower people to be able to respond with force if you try to forcefully uh, impose that racist view on others. And the federal government said, no, 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 
we're going to go ahead and lower the cost of coercion for you. We got your back. We know that there's no jury in the South that's going to convict you of anything. Jury nullification. This, by the way, is the bad side of jury, jury nullification. No jury in the South is going to convict you, and the federal government is not going to come in and stop you. Yay, Supreme Court. Good, good wise ruling. I'm, I just gonna that- nod, I'm just going to nod my head and say this. There are good folk and bad folk wherever you go. Country folk, people who want to live independently of the state, exist everywhere on earth. The question is finding your way to the kinds of people who are like-minded and creating networks that help you break the chains of... And, the- and- Yeah, basically to empower you and others to lower your reliance on state enterprises. And, you know, I want to say this as we, I think we're going to wrap it up here. When we first started doing full auto, I won't say that we didn't have some awareness of it, but I don't think, I I personally at least, I wasn't aware of, of, and again, I was a certain level. I was not aware at the depth that I am now as we've been doing these shows how how integral racism and gun control are tied to one another. They go hand in hand. Uh, gun control is absolutely, it is, it is a tool of racists to control other groups of people, primarily, and those, primarily blacks. Yeah, and those are the, peop- the same people who would say, we're anti-racist. Oh, They're yeah, the well, ones yeah, they'll, they'll call the everybody else racist at the drop of a hat. But right. in reality, gun control is, and that's, that's why the segment of this show, gun control is racist. It is. It, it just is. And and we have definitively proven it to you beyond a, a shadow of a doubt. And I'm just going to say that because that's what I do. So we'll wrap up this show. And uh, I want to thank everybody who's been watching us. Our show has been steadily growing. I don't I don't know exact. I know that our our reach is expanding, but I don't have the exact numbers. I certainly know on Spreaker it's it's still steadily expanding, but we're getting on more platforms. And those platforms are getting listeners that I'm not able to always track exactly how many. But certainly, I could say this: empirical data suggests I get I get more input from folks at random that want to tell me that they like the show, they like what we're doing. And every once in a while, somebody no, actually never I don't think I've gotten anybody say they didn't like the show yet. But I'm sure they exist. But after we get into the thousands, then then we'll start to get. That. I'll start to get some of those. But at this level, I'm only getting people that like the show, which is fine by me. I like that type of uh, communication. So, Dimitri, you will uh, – you why don't, why don't you sign us off the way that you usually do? Kalinichta repedia. And that means? Oh, that's a hard one to just to uh, well, translate. Uh, well, try your best. Try your best. When you say re, that's an abbreviation of more. More is moron or infant minded, like maroon or moron. So it's kind of like calling your boys, your boys. It's an abbreviation. So uh, you would say it to your best friends and your worst enemies, more. Uh, So kalinichta is good night. Re is my boys. Pedia is children. So it's it's a slang kind of saying, yeah, see you later. That's all that to say, see you Can later. You that a Good night and see you later. Yeah. And much. you say boys and you don't say girls. Pedia is children, really. But Oh, so women are included in the children thing. Yes, it's all inclusive. It's all in. Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's men. And then it's children, and women are a subset of Better children. together. That's Better together. <laughs> yeah. It's all inclusive. I do not endorse this show in any way, shape, <laughs> or form. I am, uh, a, I am merely a paid spokesmodel. So next week, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. We may get into, I don't know. Maybe some we'll, gun stuff. Yeah, let's look at some gun stuff. I think next yeah. week... We're, we we might look at, at maybe some of the newer guns out there and talk about some that. new cartridges that have come out that are 
pretty impressive. And you can get them on AR platforms. That sounds exciting. Wow. I, I think that that sounds like, like a dangerous good, game cartridges. That sounds like in a an good AR. tech, tech uh, segment to talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely, new cartridges available on the AR platform. That just think of the three three eight federal. That's one of them. Okay, well, we'll save the rest for next week. Thank you, everybody, for and joining night, us. Folks. And Dimitri, say that thing again. That's it. That's all I got. Kalinikta. You got to roll your R. Go ahead, Re. Say you say roll your R's. I want, I want to get this before I leave. Kalinikta. Kalinikta. Re. Re. Pedia. Pedia. Kalinikta. Re. Pedia. All righty. And on that note, God bless. Good night. And uh, reload. <laughs>